Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to talk about a very unusual complication of a stent that embolized in the lima after it was deployed. Uh, we'll go over a systematic approach uh, for how to deal with stent embolization. The patient is a 65-year-old man with a history of a cabbage. Uh, he had a lima to the LED, a vein graft to OM2, and a vein graft to the PDA. Five years after his cabbage, uh, he also underwent uh, PCI of the mid-LED uh, via his lima. He uh, presented to this cardiologist uh, with a worsening exertional angina. He had an echo that showed a mild LV dysfunction uh, with new anterior wall hypokinesis and a nuclear stress test uh, that showed a severe anterior ischemia. So on cath, uh, the native uh, coronary arteries were all either occluded or had severe disease. Um, fortunately, uh, both vein grafts were patent and the uh, uh, lima to the LED is shown. Uh, now, uh, look at it carefully. Uh, please excuse the panning. Uh, we had a new fellow uh, working with us that day. All right, so uh, what we see is that the uh, stented segment uh, in the mid LED uh, was uh, widely patent. Uh, we see a uh, focal severe stenosis uh, in the mid segment of the lima. Uh, this is probably the culprit for his angina, anterior ischemia, and anterior hypokinesis. We also see that the lima is extremely tortuous. Uh, so already there are several things uh, going through your head. Uh, first, it's going to be a bear to wire. A tortuous vessel will mean friction on the wire uh, as you're trying to uh, negotiate the turns. And so uh, you may need to reach for a microcatheter or a more hydrophilic wire. Second, uh, once you get the wire down, uh, you might get wire bias and wire straightening of the vessel. Uh, this will lead to uh, significant ischemia, especially in the lima. Uh, so you'll need to get all your equipment ready and work uh, relatively quickly. And third, uh, you may have trouble uh, getting uh, your balloons and stents down. Uh, you might need to reach for stiffer wires, uh, but this may cause more wire bias and ischemia. Or you might need uh, lubricious buddy wire, uh, but this may also cause more wire bias and ischemia. And uh, you might need to reach uh, for a uh, guide extension catheter. In any case, uh, you're stealing yourself up uh, for a possibly very wild ride. So uh, it was a pleasant surprise uh, when a pro auto wire uh, sailed down the lima into the LED with no difficulty. There was no wire bias or any uh, significant uh, vessel straightening. A 2.5 by 8 millimeter balloon passed easily as well and was used uh, to uh, predilate the stenosis. Next, a, a whisper wire uh, was needed as a buddy wire to get a 2.5 by 8 millimeter uh, DES uh, to the lesion. And here uh, we see the uh, 2.5 by 8 DES uh, being deployed uh, in the mid lima. So uh, here's the angiographic result after stent deployment. Uh, things look reasonably good. Uh, the stent looked uh, well sized and there was no uh, residual stenosis. Uh, so you breathe a sigh of relief. Uh, all that's left to do right now is to post dilate and wrap up. So you reach for a, a 2.5 millimeter NC balloon for post dilation and start advancing it. Uh, you press on fluoro to look for your stent and wait a minute, uh, where did it go? Uh, it's not there. So you looked a little further down the lima and to your astonishment, there's the stent downstream from where you just deployed it. The stent you just deployed just embolized about five centimeters downstream from its uh, initial location. Extremely unusual. So after you uh, pick up your jaw from the floor, uh, you realize that uh, most fortunately, the embolized stent is still safely on your wire. And it's still in a reasonably uh, good location to deploy. So you reach for a 2.75 millimeter NC balloon and post dilate it at the very high pressure uh, to make sure that uh, it now stays in place. Uh, there is some haziness at the original location of the stent, uh, probably reflecting a small dissection. Um, the uh, original stent location was then re-stented uh, with a 3.0 by 18 millimeter DES, uh, which was uh, intentionally oversized a little bit. And uh, here is the initial angiographic result after stenting. Um, there was good flow and uh, most reassuringly, uh, both stents are still where uh, they are supposed to be.
So after more post dilation, uh, here is the uh, final angiographic result, which looked quite satisfactory. Uh, there was TIMI3 flow in the lima. Uh, the flow in the LED is also much improved, and uh, you really lucked out this time. Uh, the patient did fine and went home the following day. So this case uh, fortunately turned out to be fairly uneventful eventually, and the outcome uh, was good. Uh, but uh, stent embolization is such an unusual complication that it's helpful to have a systematic approach uh, thought out ahead of time. So uh, when you are faced with an embolized stent, um, the first question you need to ask yourself is whether your stent is still on the wire. If the answer is yes, uh, then ask yourself whether you can ju just deploy the stent where it is. If the answer is also yes, in other words, your stent is still in a reasonable position and you can get a balloon to cross, then the solution is just to deploy the stent. And this is what happened in this case. You could consider intravascular imaging uh, to assess for sizing and uh, possible residual dissection. If your stent is not on the wire, uh, then ask yourself whether you can crush the embolized stent in place. If the answer is yes, then pass a parallel wire, ideally adjacent uh, to the embolized stent, and crush it with a second stent. Now, passing that wire could be quite tricky, uh, especially if the embolized stent is mangled or, or misoriented. Your wire uh, might actually go through the embolized stent struts uh, rather than next to it, but that's actually okay. If that happens, uh, you'll have to dilate the embolized stent cell with a balloon uh, before you'll be able to pass your second stent to crush. But what if uh, you can neither deploy the stent or cross the stent? Well, this could happen if your wire, balloon, or equipment cannot cross the embolized stent, or if the stent is so badly mangled or misoriented that it's not feasible uh, to uh, deploy or crush it, or if there's a lot of protrusion of the embolized stent into the aorta. Or, less ideal, you might not want to deploy or crush the stent uh, in the left main at a major bifurcation or in a small branch. Well, under these circumstances, the next question you ask yourself is whether you can just leave the embolized stent alone. Um, if your stent is in a, a small side branch or very far distal, uh, it might be reasonable to just leave it alone and admit the patient to the ICU and uh, get through a, a controlled infarct. Now, um, if your embolized stent is in a major epicardial vessel, then you cannot just leave it alone. And if you can't deploy it or crush it, then uh, you're going to have to uh, try to retrieve it. Uh, this is usually extremely challenging, uh, but uh, there are a few techniques uh, to be aware of. Uh, I have another uh, video uh, on uh, stent dislodgement uh, in which I go through uh, these techniques in uh, greater detail, and I've uh, included the links in the uh, comments section below. Uh, but in brief, the easiest technique uh, to retrieve a stent is uh, probably the uh, small balloon technique. Uh, if you still have wire access and can get a small balloon across the stent, uh, then you inflate it distal to the stent. And then after that, you'll be able to pull the balloon and stent back in your guide as one unit. Um, another technique is the uh, guide pinning technique. Uh, this is useful if your stent is close to the ostium. Uh, in this technique, uh, try to sheath uh, part of your stent uh, into your guide or, or a guide liner, and then inflate the balloon in the guide next to the stent. Uh, this then pins that stent against the wall of the guide, and you'll be able to pull everything out. If your stent is protruding into the aorta, uh, then snaring, uh, usually with a gooseneck, uh, might be a good option. Uh, conversely, if your stent is uh, too far down the vessel, uh, you might try to wire uh, the stent out. And you do this by the so-called wire twirling technique. Um, in this technique, you pass uh, uh, multiple wires, uh, generally three or four, uh, through the embolized stent and twirl them all together. Once the stent is nicely entangled with the wire, uh, then you pull everything out. And finally, if uh, retrieval is unsuccessful, uh, then um, you'll need to call for your surgical colleagues uh, to take it out. All right, take home messages. Uh, first, uh, avoid undersizing stents. Uh, this is true in general, uh, but it is especially true with short stents, uh, which obviously have less length uh, to grab onto the vessel wall. Uh, be especially careful at the ostium. Uh, because some of the stent will be hanging in the aorta by design, you want to make sure that you have an adequate amount of stent in the coronary. So I would be very leery of placing any stent less than 12 millimeters long uh, at the ostium. Uh, finally, we went over a simplified approach uh, to deal with an embolized stent. Uh, in brief, if it's still on the wire, deploy the stent. If it's not on the wire, crush the stent. 
If you can't deploy it or crush it, uh, then see if you can leave it alone. If you can't leave it alone, try to retrieve the stent. And if that can't be done, then call for surgical removal. Thank you for watching.